In this video, we're going to talk about WordPress settings. The settings menu can be found on the left side of the dashboard. You can see it right here. When you mouse over settings, you'll get links for general, writing, reading, discussion, media, permalinks, and the WordPress super cache. Let's go ahead with general. When you click on general, you should be arriving at this page. So as you can see, it has site title and tagline on the top. Please make sure that site title and tagline have information that is relevant to your website. The site title, well, of course, it's self-explanatory, just the title for your website. Tagline, instead of just another WordPress site, please type in a very, very brief description of your website. And again, please make sure that site title and tagline has information that is relevant to your website. The reason behind this is because the Google search results for your website will be pulled from these two, apart from other factors, of course. For the WordPress address and site address or URL, we don't need to change any of that. It's fine to leave it be as of the moment. Email address. Now, the email address that you've got to put on this part is the email that will get notifications regarding user comments, user activity, posts, and of course other site information and site activity. Membership. You might want to put a check mark on anyone can register should you want well any of your website visitors to register. Now let's go to new user default role. When you click on this, you'll see a bunch of options. You have subscriber, contributor, author, editor, and administrator. By default, and this most likely is the most recommended, new users are just set to subscribers. When we say subscribers, they get notifications regarding the posts that you make or the post that you reply to or comment to. And of course, you don't want anyone to be an administrator of your website. As much as possible, just keep it to yourself or maybe one or two very trusted friends or people. Please take note that for the date format, this will be visible on your post. So make sure that you'll be choosing the one that suits you best. Time format, just choose whichever suits your needs. Week starts on, you have the option to choose whether your week starts on a Sunday or Monday or any day of the week. Site language. Once you're done with these changes, click on Save Changes button. Next, we go to the settings for writing. To do this, go to writing under settings in the left side of the screen or your dashboard. Click on the writings link. You should arrive at a page like this. As you can see, the top part of the page is all about formatting. So you have the option for emoticons, categories for your post, and default post format. In this section right here, you also have the option to post by email, meaning you email something to an address and then that email automatically becomes a post. Please bear in mind that the email address that you should be using on this one should be secret. And then there's one more thing. Please also make sure that the email address or the email account that you're using is a pop through account, meaning you should be able to use this email account with Outlook, Outlook Express, Apple Mail, or any other email client. 
On the last part, we have Update Services. To know more about Update Services, click on the Update Services link right here. And as always, after making changes, please do not forget to click on the Save Changes button. Now, we go to the settings for reading. So, this is the page for reading settings. On this part right here, it lets you control what is displayed on the front page. So, you do have the option to show the latest post on your front page, or you can select a static page. Now, when you have made pages already, the pages will be listed here. So, as you can see, we haven't done any pages yet, so it's only the sample page. That's the only one showing up right now in the post page as well. But as time goes along and you made several pages already, it will be listed here as well. You can choose that as the static page. So regardless of the post that you made, whatever page that you choose for the static page will be the front page for your blog. The next part right here is for the RSS feed. It lets you control how many blog pages show up. So you can control it at the default is 10 posts. And you can also control if the blogs will be shown as full text, meaning it will show the entire content, or just a summary. The last part right here is search engine visibility. So you have a checkbox right here. When you put a check mark on this or when you enable this, Google will not index your articles or your pages. So it's actually up to you if you want Google to or to not index your pages as well. Now we go to the discussion settings page. This is the page for the settings for discussion. On the first part right here, it says default article settings. So there are three options here. The first one is for links that you make to other websites or blogs. So when you enable this, you will be notified of those links. The second one is for links back to your blog or to your site from other people's websites. Again, of course, when you put a check mark on this one, you will be notified via email. And the last one is to allow or disallow people from posting comments on your articles on your website. So if you want people or if you don't want people to post comments uh, regarding the articles that you've written for your website, you can choose to enable or disable that option right here on this part. Next, we go to the other comment settings. By default, the one that says users must be registered and logged in to comment. So this is actually highly recommended. Unless, of course, you want anonymous persons to be posting comments on your articles or blogs. You also have the option to ask the person who is making the comment to provide his or her name and email address first before posting the comment. As you can see, this is more on filtering comments, making sure that the people or the ones who are making comments are real people and not programs or automatic bots or whatever. The other options will be automatically close comments on articles older than specified number of days. You can also enable threaded or nested comments. Then you specify the number, level steep. And then you can also have the option to break comments into pages. And the last part on the other comment settings is 
you can actually choose to display the older comments first or if you want the newer comments to appear on the top of the page so it's actually up to you if you want the old ones or the first ones to appear on the top of the page or if you want the new ones instead now we go to the next section you can choose to be notified via email whenever anyone posts a comment or whenever a comment is held for moderation You can also choose whether or not a comment must be manually approved or let's say if the person already made comments previously, you can also enable this option, the second option right here. Once you enable this, there's no need for the comment to be moderated. It will automatically be posted as long as the person making the comment has already made a comment before and you have approval of it. Now we go to the comment moderation section. This one especially is for filtering spam comments or comments that are made for the purpose of promoting other websites, stuff that you usually don't want seeing. You can also choose to have the comment filtered so that it goes automatically to the moderation queue. The information that's used to filter the comment can be a name, can be a URL or a website address, can be a keywords from its content, email address, or even IP address. You can also choose to blacklist comments right here. And on the avatar section now when we say avatars these are those pictures that appear beside the name of the person so you can choose to have an avatar whenever you make a blog or post something aside from your name there will also be this picture that appears beside your name and you can also choose to have your users or anyone who comments on your articles or blogs have their own avatar. So you can choose to have those people be shown using a generic avatar. Or if they have a custom avatar, they can also use that. The custom avatar will appear beside their name. We now proceed to the media settings page. Here in the media settings page, you have the option to specify the dimensions of the images that you have, which you can insert on your blog or on your posts. So, as you can see here, we have one for thumbnail size, medium size, and the large size. And you can also organize those images or uploads by month and year. So when you check on this option, you'll be enabling the system to organize your uploads into month and year based folders. After making the changes here, click on the Save Changes button. Now we go to the settings page for permalinks. Now, permalinks might seem technical, maybe a bit overwhelming, or even overwhelming to the common user. However, permalinks are very helpful, and should you find yourself in a confused state, you can use the help button right here. So when you click on the help button, you'll get an overview of permalinks. There's also a link for common settings and custom structures. You can also learn more information by clicking on the links right here. So what are permalinks? Permalinks are permanent URLs to your individual pages and posts. A permalink, in essence, is an address that 
is used to link to your content, which never changes. It's permanent. That's why it's called a permalink. Now, going back, we have several right here. So the default, this is the usual permalink for WordPress. As you can see, it has the website name or your domain name plus a bunch of question marks, other symbols and numbers. You can actually choose a different style for your permalink. So you have the end name. So you can see here that instead of numbers, just random numbers, you already have the date and then a name here, sample post. So whatever the name of your post on your blog site, it will appear here. You can also have month and name. You can also have a numeric style. Post name, very simple, yet very effective. And then a custom structure, just in case you want to make a style of your own. So that is it for permalinks. Now, as you can see, we have one more, which is WordPress Supercache. Now, this isn't available in most, if not all, of the WordPress websites because this is actually because of a plugin. As mentioned during the first part, once you install more plugins or once you get more plugins into your WordPress site, or WordPress dashboard, then you'll have more functionality. WordPress Supercache is one of them. So we're not going to tackle WordPress Supercache. If you want to know more about WordPress Supercache, then it is advised that you proceed to the WordPress support forums. Just a quick recap for the settings. Just in case you need more information or if you're confused, you can always click on the help button right here. It will give you an overview or an idea on what you're actually doing or what you're actually supposed to do. So that will be general, under settings, writing. It still has that help button, as you can see. You have the help button for each section. This is the one for reading. Again, you'll have more information or at least you'll get an idea on what you're supposed to do or what is the purpose of each option by clicking on the help button. Discussion. It still provides an overview, media, and then permalinks. There you go. So with that, thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.